Eric, Wall Street waits the details on executive compensation rules for firms that received TARP funds. Congress is gearing up for a hearing on executive compensation this Thursday. So what challenges will the new rules pose for financial institutions? Well, Peter Cook is with us now, and he is joined by a man who represents banks and hedge funds on TARP-related matters. Peter. Well, thanks very much, Deirdre. Bill Burke is a partner at Wild Gottschall here in Washington. As you said, represents banks, also hedge funds, financial institutions. Been tracking this issue very closely, this uh, potential change coming down the road from Washington with regard to executive compensation of financial firms. He joins us from our Washington newsroom. Bill, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. We've been waiting weeks for the administration to spell out its executive compensation rules for any banks uh, receiving TARP funds, any institution, company receiving TARP funds. Uh, there's word it could come this week. What is is it you expect these rules to say? Well, I think what the rules will do, they'll focus primarily on TARP recipients, and they will probably put some serious restrictions on the amount that can be paid to senior executives. But I also think that the rules are going to be more broad, and they're going to apply beyond TARP recipients. And they may go to broader industries, industries that pose potential systemic risk in the view of the U.S. government, or also to other industries that we wouldn't norm normally think would pose systemic risk but are very important to the U.S. economy. And Bill, for your uh, clients, so what is it they're most worried about? Where do they think the government could perhaps go too far? Well, I think right now they're most worried about the uncertainty because we haven't seen the regulations from Treasury. Treasury has been uh, tasked with putting out these regs for quite some time. The stimulus bill in, in February actually put in the broad rules and Treasury is supposed to put out the more specific rules. The uncertainty is, is causing some concern, but also what's causing a lot of concern is that if these restrictions are too onerous, there's a lot of concern that the comp competition from abroad or from other industries will draw off talent from the financial institutions and from the banks and hedge funds, and that will be very damaging to those industries. Let me ask you about what we've heard from the administration even this weekend. Austin Goolsby, uh, uh, economic advisor to the president, said, uh, listen, the government stepped in here, saved the bacon for a lot of these firms that, uh, and those were his words, that received the federal money so they could survive the financial crisis. The government has an interest in making sure they spend that money wisely and not wasting that money on executive compensation. Do your uh, clients disagree with that notion? The government has an interest here? Oh, no, I think that everyone agrees the government has an interest, but the interest is also not just in saving the bacon as such, that will, or it really is in saving the bacon more generally, which is what are the best rules to have in place to make sure that these industries are competitive in the future? There is, of course, the government has a, a substantial interest. A lot of money has been spent to, to help these industries and to help specific banks and institutions, but also we don't want to put in rules that will hamper them in the future, that will prevent them from being competitive, from being the best in the world. And I think that's what they're worried about. You don't want to put rules in that are going to actually undermine their ability to do business in the future. The administration, the Treasury Secretary, has talked about guidelines, Bill, for setting uh, executive compensation at some of these firms tied more to performance, less to excessive risk-taking. Do you think the government can set up guidelines that will satisfy uh, financial institutions, their need to retain top talent without uh, using, again, the bonus system that's been in place for a long time? Can the government walk that fine line? I think it'll be very hard. I think that obviously the, the, the point of or the goal of achieving uh, this type of system where you, you uh, get away from excessive risk taking uh, is a good one, but I don't know exactly how that's going to be achieved. This is the compensation system in this country has generally been created by the market forces, by market conditions, by the private sector. They've made their own decisions about how to pay people. And generally, that has been a very successful system for this country. I think that if the government tries to put in a one-size-fits-all model, that that could, again, really hurt the way that these industries function. And I'm not sure there's really a lot of history or support for the idea that the government can do a better job than private sector at determining how people should be paid. All right, Bill Burke, he's a partner in Wild Gottschall here in Washington, talking executive pay with us. An issue, Eric, we're going to follow very closely this week. Eric? We certainly will, Peter.